So this is an impromptu stream and stuff. Uh, I, um, I was watching this Biffin Brit, big fan. Uh, well, not big fan, but I like his stuff. Very entertaining. I, I think it's uh, funny and stuff like that. And he just made a Crusader Kings 3 video. And I was watching it, and as I was watching it, like, I had all these thoughts pop into my head, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to fire up the live stream, I'm going to make a video, and we're going to get this thing on on record before I forget about it, and before I, I uh, lose all of the uh, the ideas that are bouncing around in my head. Um, so, sorry about this being kind of at a weird time. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, his exploit that he was trying to do, so the video, I'll, I'll link the video in the description of the YouTube video uh, afterwards, actually... I'll throw it in the chat in case people are interested. Um, but it'll also be in the YouTube uh, description. Afterwards, highly recommend it. Very entertaining. But the challenge that he's trying to do is... Uh, the title of the video is Can You Beat Crusader Things Kings 3 with No Vassals Challenge? Is uh, KC3 Perfectly Balanced with No Exploits? Uh, which obviously every game is uh, perfectly balanced with no exploits as uh, the Smith from Brit has shown repeatedly. So, <clears throat> something that I found kind of interesting that as he was doing this is basically he got rid of all of his vassals um, because the whole system is built on uh, <clears throat> you. So, if you're like a king, so he, he chose the Holy Roman Empire. And the Holy Roman Empire uh, is the, the top dog, right? And so he gets um, pledges and, and taxes and stuff like that from his duchies, right? And there's so many duchies in the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And then all of them get money from uh, their lords, and it works through its way down the chain. And at each of these stages, it's like having a middleman when it comes to trade. That's one of the reasons that uh, prices were able to drop so low and, and certain things, uh, certain commodities became much more affordable for people during the uh, Age of Exploration uh, after 1492 in Europe is because they opened up all of these pathways that bypassed the Silk Road. And while the Silk Road was very effective for getting um, goods from China all the way to Europe, uh, there was obviously about a thousand middlemen on the way there. And there's definitely that case uh, when it comes to trade from, let's say, like, let's take Portugal's route, where they went from Portugal all the way to, um, to India and then back, or maybe even China, uh, but I, I know for sure they made it to India, and, you know, you're going down below, uh, around Africa, stopping, um, one of the major hubs was, uh, South Africa, where they had the boars, and then getting all the way up into India and China, and, uh, the Spice Islands, which I believe were around Indonesia, <laughs> um, but I could be wrong on that, <clears throat> uh, and that is a... So, like, even though that probably has a lot of middlemen in that whole transaction, it's probably far less than going, doing a land trade route from China all the way into Europe. Uh, so, that kind of similar thing happens when it comes to vassals. And that's one of the things that uh, the early modern period sees shrink is... Um, like Martin Van Krebel laid it out in his book, uh, The Rise and Fall of the State, or The Rise and Decline of the State, I think is actually what it's called, um, where <clears throat> you had countries that were making a certain amount of money, and they relied on uh, tax collectors. And these tax collectors, basically their job was, they were supposed to collect this amount of tax, and they, they their basic pay was taking some off the top, is basically how they got paid. Um... They weren't supposed to, but, like, it was kind of, like, there was no way you were making, that you didn't get paid for the job. So it was like, there's no way to make money otherwise. And so they would end up taking quite a bit off the top. And when it became a regulated thing and it got centralized and, uh, you know, these people got paid a set wage and they were just supposed to go out and collect the taxes and stuff like that, uh, I believe France saw, like, a 30 to 50% increase in revenues. And that allowed things that was the next thing that actually accidentally happened in the game. Now, this wasn't, <clears throat> this isn't a one-to-one -one correlation, but um, basically in the early modern period, how it worked out was this expanded the amount of money that these countries had at their disposal, and therefore they could funnel that money into more uh, military spending 
and more advanced militaries and stuff like that, uh, being able to invest in uh, things like uh, <clears throat> heavy arms, uh, things like cannon, s such like that, uh, and make the government much more professionalized, both uh, militarily and uh, bur bureaucracy-wise. <clears throat> and we've seen that grow, grow to the glut that it has gotten to uh, right now, <clears throat> and that's not necessarily good, but initially, these reforms um, cut down a lot of glut, and they, they, they streamlined and made things much more efficient, <clears throat> and that's why they were adopted. Uh, so, that's not how they, the game portrays it. Basically, the reason it worked out in his game, where he, he ended up being able to have a greater increase in overall fighting power, is because uh, it was basically he... <clears throat> he's only supposed to be able to control six areas or six um, regions at a single time, and he had, like, 500. And so <laughs> that allowed him to stack um, stack a bunch of buffs that he normally wouldn't be able to. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But it, it wasn't supposed to necessarily mirror that kind of thing, but it's very fascinating that it did. Uh... You know, it's, uh, Cru Crusader Kings, I, is, I haven't played it, I kind of want to now, um, <clears throat> but it's kind of fascinating when, uh, companies make a game where they want to imitate what actually happened as best as possible, and they, they put all these systems in place to be able to mimic that, and, uh, what is often called emerging gameplay, where, uh, people do things because humans are infinitely adaptable and will find ways to mess up your system always. Um, they come up with creative ways to break your system. But by the very nature of trying to create creative ways to break the system, i.e. break the feudal system, that is basically the core of Crusader Kings 3, you accidentally showed why the modern period took over. Because the reason the modern period took over is because it it showed an alternative and a a way to break the feudal system, and it was found to be effective, and then therefore people ad adopted it, and that's kind of what happened here. And it's it's not intentional by any group, but it's fascinating to see that these two different paths and different things of playing out where you have both a simulated form of medieval Europe and the actual um, actual historical medieval Europe uh, in a certain sense come to the same conclusion they they still they break the system in similar ways ways it at the even though they're not the same per se uh are close enough to be analogous and be compared to one another and i find that very fascinating uh i think that's all i have to say on this um this might be a shorter video let me let me make sure i'm not missing anything one second here uh Yeah, I, I think that's it. I just wanted to kind of get that down um, before the thought escaped me. Uh, not my normal kind of thing. It's a little bit shorter, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, yeah, uh, if you thought this was interesting, um, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I will leave the video to the Speaking Brits video uh, below. I, I find them entertaining. Maybe you will too. Uh, and uh, if you have any thoughts on the matter or uh, want me to explore this topic or other topics in more detail, uh, leave a comment or uh, at me at, uh, in Social Galactic. Um, anyway, I have been Andrew Norris, and this has been According to Andrew. And thank you guys so much for watching and uh, listening. Anyway, have a good night.